Hi guys and welcome back. Well, as I promised, I will be starting with lessons in business literacy today. So I'm going to start with the math, with the mathematical part, which is from learning module five. The reason for that, um, learning module one to four, which is the communications part of this course, is something you just need to learn and practice. But if there are any questions relating to those subjects which you like, which you are unclear about, please still feel free to email me and I'll try and answer them as best I possibly can. Just uh, one thing with regards to the emails, um, I get a lot and a lot of emails and I try to answer them as quickly as possible. So please be patient. Um, I didn't actually expect such a big response as what I've been receiving. And there's a lot of students that need some, some help out there. So I try to help everybody. So if you send me an email and I don't answer you immediately, please just be a little bit patient. I will get to it as soon as possible. All right, so we are starting with business literacy. Like I said, learning module five and working with numbers, which is um, an introduction. Okay, so I'm going to go through these and I'm going to just explain, I'll basically just explain a few things which, um, which I think is important for you and for your exam. I'll try and do everything, but let's see how far we get. So first of all, let's look at our number system. Now first of all, the number system that we use in, um, in South Africa is called the Hindu Arab, Arab, Arab <laughs> I can't pronounce it, Arabic which is a decimal system, which means it counts in segments of 10. And that we all should know, it's starting at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then you start again with 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So it, it works in intervals of, um, of 10. Okay, so first of all, in the textbook, I'm just working through the textbook, where it we, we talks about about um, place value. So it says here the position or place of a digit within a number determines the value it represents. Okay, so if you have a number like C639, oh, the, the 6 represents a certain number, the 3 represents a certain number, and the 9 represents a certain number. So you need to figure it out because you get 1s, 10s, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, etc, etc. So in the number like 639, the 9 represents your 1s, the 3 represents your 10s, and your 6 represents your hundreds, because think about it, it's 639. But I am going to show you an easy way, just how to calculate or to work out what is the place value of a specific number? Sorry, just getting my... So if you look at learning example 5a... Sorry, just getting my shoes off. Thanks. If you look at learning example 5a, there's a very big number there. So let's quickly write it down. So it's 2, 5... 4, 6, 1, 9, 3, 4, 7. Okay. So the easiest way, because now there's obviously a lot of numbers. Now if they ask you what's the place value of each of those numbers, you're going to get, oh, what am I going to do? How do, I, how do I work this out? Well, there's actually a very simple way of doing it. Let's start with the 7. Um, what I always do is you draw down a line and then you mark it with a 1. So your 7 represents your 1's. Why? Because there's no numbers behind it. Now when you go to the 4, now the number that you're going down will always be the 1. And if there's a number next to it, you add a 0. So in other words, the 7 will be the 1's, the 4 will be your 10. And so you do that with the next number, the 3 
will be your 1. And then there's two numbers behind it, 0, 0. So the 3 represents your 100. The 9, there's your 1. And there's three numbers behind it, so it's 1, 2, 3. So the 9 represents your 1,000. The 1, okay, that's obviously 1. And then you just 1, 2, 3. Three, four. So the one represents your ten thousand. The six is your one. So how many? So then it's zero, 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 zero. Represents your hundred thousand. You see how easy it is. Your four. Let's bring it down. Okay, that's the one. Then it's one, two, three, four. Five, six. So you just add zeros for the amount of numbers after the four. So that will be your millions. And then the five, that's your one. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three. So that represents your ten thousands. And then the two, that's your one, and one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, so I'm just counting one, two, three, one, two, three, that's your millions, so hundred million. So the two represents your hundred, um, your hundred million. So as you can see from that example, then you have two times a hun hundred million, five times ten million, four times a million, etc, etc, you get the point and then that will, that just shows you the place number. So the easy way to find out what's the place, you just draw a line, that's a one, there's no numbers behind it. The four, one, just add a zero, so that's your ten, your hundred, your thousands, etc. I hope that was easy enough to, to, to calculate, so it's not really that, that difficult. Okay. And also, as you can see, I'm not in my usual recording spot today because somebody else is using it. So I just moved up to another spot and I have to use this makeshift board here. So I hope, oh, sorry. So I hope this doesn't, well, I hope it records properly. Okay. So that was the how to calculate the place value. So now let's take a look at whole numbers. Now it's simple. Whole numbers are simply numbers that are whole. So what do I mean exactly by that? I mean that there is no decimal after it. You see, so a whole number is 1, 2, 3, 4. If it was 1.5, then that would not then that would not be a whole number. So your whole numbers or just the normal numbers that you count. Okay. Oh, this makeshift board is going everywhere. Okay, and now we are looking at the negative numbers. So, as you also know, you get numbers of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to infinity. Okay, but let's say you go to Iceland or like in New Zealand, you go down to Dunedin. Sometimes the temperatures reach in the minuses. So that'll be minus 1, minus 2, and minus 3. So in other words, those will all be under freezing point. Okay. So if you're looking at the negative numbers, it's the numbers that are to the, um, to the left of the zero. And I'm going to be talking about a timeline, and this should also just be explained a little bit easier. The thing is, they don't really ask a lot of questions on the negative numbers, but they do appear in your, in your calculations that you have to do. So you just more or less need to know where they, where they are. So integers are the numbers that can be written without a fraction or a decimal point. So, in other words, it's numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., not 1.5, 1. 1. Waka, waka, waka. 
The entire set of integers therefore consists of positive integers and negative integers. So positive integers and negative integers. All right. So that's not very difficult to understand. So let's just carry on. Oh, I really wish I had my big board now. Makes it a bit easier. So let's look at, we're going to be talking about the number line. I've actually already done a little bit of an example on the number line. So let's just do a line here. Okay, so let's just see. Okay, I'm just going to mark a spot that's zero. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six, minus seven, minus eight, minus nine. I'm just going to go to there. All right. So the best way to visualize the set of integers is to picture these numbers on a line and in the order they go. So the numbers continue, so this one goes into infinity because you can carry on there and this one also goes, that's a sign for infinity by the way, to infinity so you can carry on with 11, 12, 13, 14, walk out until you reach a quadrillion and then you can count even behind that. So in other words, it just continues. But one thing, one thing you need to know though, is you need to know which numbers are bigger and which numbers are smaller. So you're going to see a little thing that looks like this or like this and they will ask you that and then equal. Okay, so technically how I always used to explain this when I had grade 7 students is this, they must think of this as a crocodile, and the crocodile wants to eat all the big numbers. So if you get into your, to the example, for instance, like what is bigger, minus 1 or 1, then the crocodile will obviously eat 1. But I'm going to get to that now in a minute. And now I'm talking a lot of stuff here at the moment, but this should be a little bit basic. So how, so how this works is when you're looking at your timeline, when you look at your timeline and you have the numbers on the right of another number is usually the bigger number. Now what do I mean by that? If I've got a 2 and I've got a 1, then you can see that um, the 2 is to the right of the 1. So in other words, the 2 is bigger. So in other words, the crocodile will eat the 2. Sorry that I talk about that. I know you guys are not kids. But my grade 7s used to love when I talk like it. So I know you guys aren't, aren't kids, but just to get the point. The same is with a negative number. So let's say you've got a 1 and you've got a minus 1. And once again, because... Be because the minus 1 is to the left of the 1, that means that the minus 1 is smaller. So anything to the right of another number means it's bigger. Anything to the left means it's smaller. So obviously here again, so the 1 which is on the right of the minus 1 is, is bigger. Okay. So the same with here, yeah, you should know what is bigger, you know that the 3 is bigger than a 2, the 4 is bigger than a 3, and all that. So when you do these things and you need to figure out which is bigger, just think of the timeline and think where are they on the timeline. Okay, so if it's, like I said again, if you have, um, if you need to move, okay, wait, let me just see. So if you work on a 6 and a 3, so because the 6 is to the right of the, th the 6 is to the right of the 3, that means it's, um, the 6 is greater than the 3. So it's all about how you move on your timeline. To the left is smaller, to the right is bigger. Okay.
Remember, if there's anything confusing about this, please just throw me an email and I'll try and get it. I'll try and answer it as quickly as possible, but I think this, this should be rather basic. Okay. So if you look at learning example 5b, you've got a minus 1 and a 1, so obviously which one? So we've got 1 and minus 1. So the minus 1 is to the left of the 1, so when it's to the left of the other number, you know that it is smaller, so 1 is bigger, minus 1 is, um, oh, 1 is the biggest number, minus 1 is the smallest number. Now, if you look at numbers like minus 8 and minus 7, look at minus 8. So here we have minus 8 and minus 7. Now, minus 8 is to the left of minus 7. So, in other words, that means the minus 8 is smaller than the 7. So, in other words, minus 7 is to the right of minus 8. So that means it is bigger. So minus 7 is bigger and we know the crocodile eats the biggest number. Alright, so if you've got 10 and minus 3, we've got 10 all the way here. And because minus 3 is all the way to the left, we know that minus 3 is smaller than 10. And if you couldn't figure that one out, then just the minus um, should have given it away. Alright. Okay. So let's carry on. So this is just something you need to practice and try to visualize your timeline and think where is the number. Like I can see we've got a year, a number minus 101 and a minus 201. So you can think, so you can just once again think 201 is far to the left and 101 is a bit closer. So minus 101 will, will then obviously be the bigger number. Alright, so let's now look at basic calculations involving positive numbers. Now, luckily, you will be able to use a calculator for this. So, let's see. So, it says, during a shopping expedition, Sophia, it's funny, whenever there's shopping involved, they always use a woman's name. Coincidence? I think not. But, <laughs> it's a good thing my wife's not here to hear me now. Alright, so they bought... 700 rand worth of clothes, obviously 320 rand worth of food and 175 rand worth of drinks. Holy moly what that woman can drink. Alright, so anyway, when you get a question and they ask you what, they can either ask you add the following or they can say what is the sum of these two numbers. That just means that you need to, just need to add it up. They can also um, put it in a, in a word question, which would be like the one you will see in practice exercise 5b, where they say the attendance of the opera is so many people, so many on Saturday, so many on Sunday. What was the attendance for the, two perform for the performances? Then you have to add it up. So it's either what's the sum or add the following numbers. So even though you can use a calculator in this, I'm just quickly going to show you how to do it manually if you really need to. So first of all, you just write your, your, your numbers underneath each other. Make sure that the ones are under the ones, the tens are under the tens, the hundreds are under the, the, the hundreds are under, under the hundreds. And then you just simply add it up. So you've got zero plus zero is zero, plus five is five. Okay, then we've got zero plus two is two, two plus seven is nine. And then we've got 7 plus 3 is 10, plus 1 is 11. Okay, so she, she spent 1,195 rent. So this is, like I say, very basic. You can add, you can, they can give it to you in a, word, in a word sum or anything. You just have to add it up. Now the subtraction. And there falls my pen. Sorry. Oh, got it. Okay, now subtraction is where they can ask you what is the difference between these two numbers. So that means you just have, you need to take numbers away. Alright, so let's have a quick look. 
So subtraction, it says again, Sophia took 1,400 in cash with her and she embarked on a shopping expedition mentioned earlier to find the amount of money she had left after shopping. It's actually amazing that she had anything left. Uh, that's just a joke. Um, total amount of her purchases from the original 1,400. Okay, so in other words, once again, they can also add this in a word sum like the one they've given us here. And she had 200, okay, sorry, 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 all right. So once again, a word sum, or they can ask you, what's the difference between the following, etc., etc., etc. So let's see. So Sophia started with 1,400 rand. And as we calculated in the previous example, she used 1,195. So you can just punch that into your calculator and it will give you the answer. But I'm just quickly going to show you how to work it out manually if you know for if you need to do it so. Okay, so the one thing that we need to know when we do a subtraction is you need to be a little bit more awake than when you do the addition. Okay, so let's take a look at this quickly. So first we say 0 minus 5 is minus 5 but you cannot have a minus 5 answer at this stage because it's right at the beginning of your of your um, sum of your calculation so in other words what you do is you need to borrow numbers from somewhere so obviously you can't borrow a number from a zero because it doesn't have any numbers that you can borrow but you can borrow a number from a three or from a four so in other words you take a number from the four that becomes a three and you bring the 1 over to the 0. So this becomes a 10 at the moment. Mm. But now I need a number here. So now I borrow a number from the 10. So that 10 becomes a 9. And then we've got a 10 over there. So now we say 10 minus 5 is 5. 9 minus 9 is a 0. 3 minus 1 is 2. And 1 minus 1 is obviously 0. So in other words, words um, she she had 205 rand left after her shopping spree okay so you won't be asked they won't ask you to do it manually like I've done it here but it is always good just to know how to um, how to do that all right so I'm gonna go very fast through these things because this is kind of basic stuff but if you do have emails or questions with regards to stuff like this please um, I will try and help you as best I can so the next in the books we are dealing with multiplication so how they can ask you multiplication they can also either say multiply the following or what is the product of the following so when they ask product or something you need to multiply and once again, you will be able to use a calculator, so you will not have to worry about that. So, let's see. And they can do it in a word form as well. So, you need to tune your brain in how to do it. So, it says here, Moses has a midweek job at 120 rand per day. So, he, his total pay for the five days is how much? So, you can either do the following. You can say, okay, you worked for five days, so you got 120 rand every day. One, two, three, four, five days. And you can just simply add it up. Uh, answer is 600. Or, you can just simply say, 120 rand times five days equals 600 rand. Okay. So... The, so multiplication is just a faster way of adding up. So it's the adding up of the same, um, almost of the of this of the same of the same number. Like you can see there, 120 times five. It means five times a hundred. Okay, well, it means five times 120, but it means you add it 125 times. Like I explained it here. So you can either add it up per day, or you can just simply say. 120 times 5. Okay, 
So, and it just says here in the textbook, note that any number multiplied by zero will always be zero. So, five times zero equals zero. Okay, that's just a little mental note you need to make. Um, just that you know, but obviously you will have a calculator. So, if you're unsure, use your calculator. Okay, so multiplication is just an easier way of adding up. Okay, so you just need to practice it. Do practice exercise. Well, in learning example 5C, it says a super what? a supermarket advertised bottles of water for seven seven rand fifty per bottle. Should a customer purchase a single bottle at a time, however, the bottles are also packed in packs of six. So the unit price per bottle comes to seven when purchased as a six pack. If a customer were to purchase four packs of bottled water, the total cost would be. So first they say there are six bottles in a pack. If you, if you buy a pack, you only, you only pay seven rand for it. And they say if somebody would buy four. So in other words, it's six bottles times seven rand, so that forms your packet times you're buying four packets. So you need to analyze that word sum in order to get to it. So you need to just think and read your, your questions extremely, extremely carefully because they do like to trick you. There are a lot of tricky questions and so yeah, so read your questions. So, I'm just going to read it again. It says, a supermarket advertised bottled water at $7.50 per bottle. Now, that information in a sum like this, they usually just put in there to confuse you. All right. Per, um, $7.50 per bottle. Should a customer purchase a single bottle? So, in other words, now you need to know the $7.50 is, on yeah, is only if you buy one bottle. One bottle. But then you read further and you see, okay, however, the bottles are also packed in sixes. And the unit price per bottle comes to seven rand when you purchased a six pack. All right. So that's a pack, seven rand per bottle. There's six bottles in the pack. If a customer were to buy four packs of bottled water, the total cost would be, so that will be six times seven times four, and that would be? 168 rand. Okay. So I hope that helps you a little bit. But once again, you will have a calculator. But when it comes to the word sums, you really need to just think and you need to practice this stuff. Do your practice exercises. Um, do your sample assessments. You know, work through these things that your brain gets used to uh, working it that way. All right. So you can see in practice exercise 5D. They can either ask, multiply those two numbers, or what is the product of those numbers, or they can give it to you in a word sum. All right. So let's quickly look at division. Okay. Now division, like we saw, that multiplication is a quick way of adding up. Division is a quick way of subtracting. All right, like, and they, and yeah, you can say they ask you, what is the quotient? That, I'm just going to write it. I cannot pronounce these funny words. Quo. So they can ask you either divide the following or what is the quotient of that, or they can ask you sim simply in a word sum. Once again, they can put it in words, and you need to know that you need to divide it. So, if we've got a sum that says, let's have a look quickly. So, if you've got a sum that says, they want to find out how many times does 10 go into 30. So, you've got 30, so how many times does 10 go in there? So, in other words, you need to say 30 Okay, minus 10. Okay, that's 20. And you say again, 20 minus 10. That's 10. 
So 10 minus 10 equals zero. So how many times did we have to minus 10 in order to get zero? And obviously it's one, two, three. So three divided by 10 equals three. Okay, so that's just a simple way to do it. So you do 30, so that's just a quick question. 30 divided by 10, you say 30 minus 10 is 20. You bring that over, minus 10 is 10. So you basically do that until you reach zero. And then you see how many times that you have to um, um, deduct 10 in order to get to zero. The answer is three. All right. Okay, so the vision is the, the um, inverse or the opposite of multiplication. So what does that mean? 45 divided by 3 is 15. So if you can do that and you say 45 and you have to deduct 3 the whole time, you're going to do it 15 times is 15. So 45 divided by 3 is 15, but 15 multiplied by 3 gives you 45. So in other words, the vision is just the opposite of multiplication. All right, so that should be easy. That also should be easy enough. Let's look at some examples here. It also says, yeah, I want to teach you a quick um, formula while I'm busy. All right. If you look at practice exercise 5e, it says if a bucky can travel 725 kilometers, oh, if a bucky can travel for 725 kilometers on 50 liters of diesel, how far can he travel on one liter of diesel? Okay. So, in order to work this out, I'm going to teach you a little formula, a formula that I've been using for years right now. And it consists of, if you've got two variables, and you need to calculate on one of those variables another variable, I know this doesn't make any sense, then you can use the formula. And the formula is x over x equals y over y. Okay, for this, I'm going to need my calculator, so let me just quickly get it. Okay, so what I mean, what I meant is the following. It says here, you've got a variable. Now, in this question, we've got two variables. We've got kilometers that you can drive, and you've got liters. So if you've got two variables and you need to calculate another portion of the same variable, you use the formula. Okay, so in other words, now it says that a bucky can travel for seven. Okay, so in other words, you simply say 725 equals 50 liters of diesel. Am I right? That's what the question says. It says a bucky can travel 725 kilometers on 50 liters of diesel. So 725 kilometers equals 50 liters of diesel. But now they're asking you, how far can it travel on one liter? So they, they're asking for a liter, how far can it drive? So one, so we need to calculate how many kilometers, which I just mark X, how many kilometers can you do on, on one um, on one one liter. So how you want to do it? You want to get your x up. So you just turn this thing around. So it's x over seven hundred. Oh, oh my goodness. Sorry. There. Seven hundred and twenty-five equals. Remember, you're just turning it around. One over fifty. Okay. So x over 725 equals 1 divided by 50. That's 0 0.02. Now remember, 
if on one side of the equation of your equal sign, if you are dividing, you need to bring that number over because you want to get the x alone. Okay, so in other words, if it's divided on this side, when you bring it over, remember that, um, that uh, multiplication is the opposite of um, division and division is the opposite of, 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 of multiplication. So in other words, this is x divided by 725, but you need to bring it over. So the moment you bring it over to this side, you multiply it. So it's 0 0.02 multiplied by 725. If this was 725 multiplied by x and you're bringing it over, then it would become a division on the other side. All right. So your x then is 0 0.02 multiplied by 725 and that gives you 14.5 kilometers. Okay, so one liter you can calculate. You can work on 14.5 kilometers per one liter of diesel. All right, so like I say, this is a simple um, equation that I've always just used. If you've got two variables, then you can just calculate it using this formula. Like I said, this one only worked with kilometers and liters. It asked for a liter. How far? So you've got two variables which uh, you can use. All right, this also just takes practice. Okay. All right, like I said, if you do battle, just throw me an email. Okay, let's carry on. Now we're going on basic calculations involving negative numbers. All right. So once again, when you have a negative number and you have to add something, I'm just going to explain it very simple. If you need to add anything, uh, if you have to add a positive number, okay, yeah, please note, if this is, if you add a positive number, you move to the right. Okay, so what does this mean? The question is um, to add 5 to minus 4. They say if, a, if the temperature is minus 4 degrees and it increases with 5 degrees, what would the temperature be? So you start at minus 4 and you just move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So in other words, it will be 1. Okay, so minus 4 plus 5 is 1. But now what happens if we have a positive number and we wish to add a negative number? Oh my goodness, it's a fun year. Okay, so it says if we've got 3 plus minus 8. Ooh, that looks rather confusing, doesn't it? But now I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you a little secret here. If you, okay, first of all, let's do it. If you have a two positives, then in other words, you add it. Okay, if you have two negatives, then, like if that was three minus minus eight, you add it. If you have a positive and a negative, you subtract it. All right. This is just a little thing, or if you have a, a negative and a positive, you subtract it. So what do I mean now? See, we've got a three, because if you have to add a positive number, you move to the right of the, you move to the right of the timeline. Am I right? If you have to subtract a number, <coughs> a positive number, you need to move to the left. Okay. So these are all things one has to get used to. Okay. So we've got 3 plus minus 8. So what did I say here? If you've got a positive and a negative, you subtract it. So in other words, minus, minus, plus, plus. Okay. So in other words, you can actually say this will be 3 minus 8. So 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
So 3 minus 8 equals minus 5. All right, so just learn these little rules. So if you've got two positives, if you've got a positive and a positive, you add it. As simple as that. So in other words, you move to the, move to the right. If you've got two negatives, so like if this was 3 minus minus 8, that will be like saying 3 plus 8. Okay, so that will be 11. And if you have a positive and a negative like we've got here, that becomes a minus, so it's 3 minus 8, and then vice versa as well. Alright, so I hope that explains it a little bit. And this should actually be much easier if you have to add with a negative number or subtract. So just remember this line, yeah? Plus and a plus, plus. Minus and a minus, a plus. A plus and a minus, a minus, a minus and a plus, a plus. Ah, pfft. minus and a plus, a minus. All right, so that's this um, addition. I'm just going to read what it says here in the textbook. It says, if a number is given, uh, if a positive number is given to a, uh, if a positive number is added to a given number, we move the given number to the right of the number line that I just explained. And if a negative number is added, we move it to the left. But like I just explained you, if you have a positive and a negative, it just becomes a minus. Just makes it a little bit um, easier. All right. So subtraction. Hmm. So that works exactly the same way as this. You just apply those um, rules. Okay. Uh, for subtraction of any integers, say a minus b, we always mean a plus minus b. Okay, that's just going to confuse you. Just basically do what I told you here. Alright. So if we've got minus 602 minus minus 71, that will be minus 602 plus 71. Alright. Okay, so let's look at multiplication. Excuse me. All right. So if you have a multiplication number, let's look at here. It says, remember um, when we looked at the salary example previously when we talked about multiplication? Here they've got another example. You can either say 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 equals 10 or 2 times 5 equals 10. But now if you do that with uh, negative numbers, so you can have... Hmm, going to wipe this. I'm going to keep that up there for now. Okay. So if you have minus 2 plus minus 2 plus minus 2 plus minus 2 plus okay 1 1, 2, 3, 4 minus 2 Okay, now remember what I said, if you have a plus and a minus, that just becomes a minus. So it's minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we've got, okay, minus 2, plus minus 2, 1, 2, plus minus 2, 1, 2. So in other words, you get to the answer, minus 10. So that's the same if you've got, so the same way we can say that is minus 2 times 5. All right, and now when you multiply with a negative number, this, these rules also apply to your answer. Now, what do I mean by that? If you've got a negative and you multiply it with a positive, your answer will be negative. So that'll be minus 10. If you have two negatives. So let's look at, at this example. You've got minus 7 times minus 3. So if you multiply a negative number with a negative number, you see a minus and a minus, your answer is a positive number. Okay, so it's minus 7, so minus and a minus is a positive. 7 times 3, 21. So it's plus. So it's 21. 
Okay, so when you do division as well as multiplication, you also use these rules, okay? So if you multiply two positive numbers, your answer will be positive. If you multiply, okay, well actually it's multiply or divide. Two negative numbers, your answer will be positive. If you multiply a positive and a negative number, your answer will be negative. If you have a negative and a, you multiply or divide a negative and a positive, your answer will again be negative. So that's just a little something that you need to know and that you need to practice. Okay, so the same thing, so these rules work for those type of sums where you've got a positive and a negative. So positive, negative, negative, and then etc. So the same works for division. If you have to divide, let's say you've got minus 36 divided minus 6. Now remember, you've got a minus divided by, an, I've got a negative number divided by no, another negative number. So it's a positive. 36 divided by 6 is 6. So your answer there is 6. Okay, I hope that explains it uh, a little bit better in how to do it but like I said before guys this this stuff um, just takes a lot of a lot and a lot of practice okay and just remember when you do it and when you when you get to a big sum don't stress about it just remember these rules when you add with a negative number this works when you multiply or divide just remember your answer then will be positive just remember when your answer will be positive and when your answer will be negative. All right. Okay, good. Now I can wipe this again. Hope you wrote it down. If not, just uh, rewind the rewind the video and do that. Okay. Now we're getting to a nice part. If you get okay. Okay, I'm going to first do, let's do a difficult one. If you get a question like this, now without, now this is an example in your textbook. So what I want you to do is I'm going to write it down. Then without looking at the answer, I want you to pause this video and quickly do a calculation. Just quickly do it. I know when I, I did this with my students and it's quite funny actually. So if you've got a question like this, it's 42 minus 6 times 3 plus 7 plus 2, so that's a bracket, within a bracket, times 1 plus 4. Okay, so what I want you to do now is write this down, this example is in the book, so without looking at your book, just write this down and quickly and quickly do it and then carry on with the video. Okay, so well after you've done this now, you, you got an answer and I can tell you some of you will be correct, some of you will be wrong. But the reason why are some, I mean, it's one, it's the same calculation. Why are there different answers to it? It is because there are certain rules of maths, which is called the order of operations. And that is the order in which you need to do uh, a calculation like this. So this one I'm going to do last. I'm first going to explain to you the order of calculations. All right. So first of all, first of all, you need to remember the following. Rule number one of maths, you always work left to right. Okay, and when I do the examples, you're going you're gonna to understand exactly what I mean. Rule number one, left to right. Rule number two, the first thing you do after you know you're leaving, you, uh, you have to move left, work left to right, you first do the brackets. Rule number three, 
in the brackets or wherever you first do multiplication okay so i'm going to write it down i'm going to say multiplication and division rule number four you do adding and subtracting okay so if you follow these simple rules number one let's look at it again number one left move work left to right and I'm going to do some examples now to explain how, how to do it. Number two, you do your brackets first. You always do your bracket first. Three, you do your multiplication and your divisions. And four, you, lastly, you do your adding and your subtracting. Okay, so what I mean, okay, before, I'm, before I do this one, I'm not going to do this one now. I'll do that one last. Okay. So let's look at learning example 5e. It says 266 divided by 1, 4 plus 8. Alright. So now first of all, when you get that, everyone says it all of it? Yes. Now when you get uh, some like that, you follow the rules. Number one, you work left to right. Fine. Rule number two, you do brackets. Are there any brackets? No. Correct. Rule number three, multiplication and division. So what does that mean? Is when you get to a point where there's multiplication and division, like there is in the sum, you can basically you work with the two numbers to the left and to the right of your multiplication or division sign. So in other words, so it's 266 divided by 14, that gives you 90. And then that plus 8, we just leave there because we didn't touch that yet. So now once again, so every single step you take, every single step you do, you follow the rules left to right. So now we work left to right. Are there any brackets left? No. Are there multiplication and division? No. Adding and subtracting, last step, so 19 plus 8 equals 27. Okay, so you need to follow these rules. I'm going to do all of these examples because I know for a lot of you it's stuff you have to get used to, but you need to follow the rules. After, you, you, after you've mastered this, you can basically do any type of sub, to be ex to be honest. Okay. So let's look at the next one. Okay. So we've got seven multiplied by six plus five, which is in brackets, minus thirty-three divided by three multiplied by five. Oh my goodness. All right. So once again, but when you get something like this, you relax. <gasps> Take a breather. Get some coffee. Don't forget me. I love coffee. All right. So first of all, let's see what can we do here. So first of all, we remember we move left to right. Am I right? I know I'm right. Okay. So left to right. That. Now we're looking for brackets. Are there brackets? Ah, yes. And we do the brackets first. So 7. So now we say 6. Now in the bracket, again, we start left to right. Are there any more brackets? No. Are there any multiplication and divisions? No. Are they adding and subtracting? Yes. So 6 plus 5 is 11. Minus 33. Divided by 3 times 5. Alright. Uh, are we having fun yet? Okay. Now you know when a 7 is next to a bracket with one number, that actually means you're multiplying it. So in other words, I'm just going to write, I'm just going to remove that bracket like that. And I'm going to put a multiplication sign there. So whenever you have any number, let's say it's 1... That means 1 times 5. Okay, so just remember when it is like it. So in this sum we have 7, 6 plus 5. 
that's actually say 7 multiply by 6 plus 5. Okay, but remember the rules, you do the brackets first. So in the brackets, it's irrespective, okay, well not irrespective, but once you reach a bracket, you need to start following the rules again. And don't worry, I'm going to do more examples, so relax. All right, so now once again, so in this step, now we need to follow the rules again. First of all, remember, we always move left to right. Am I right? I better be right. Okay, number two, are there any brackets left? No. Multiplication and division? Yes. So what we do, see there's a, there's a, um, a subtracting, so we don't, we're not touching at that. And remember what I say when they say multiplication and division, you take the two numbers, I'm sorry, I just, I just like doing that, um, to the left and the right of that multiplication or division sign, and you just, because that's what you're working with now, then we've got 33 divided by 3, and then multiplied by 5. So 7 times 11 is 77, minus 33 divided by 3 is 11, multiplied by 5. All right. So now, once again, so every single step, you start from the beginning and you work your way through. So now, once again, we work left to right. That's very important. Some people just start in the middle and start there. No, start here. Okay. Brackets, check. No brackets. Multiplication and division? Ah, oh, yes. So I'm just marking that. So 77 minus, because once again, now we're actually doing our bracket. 11 times 5 is 55. So, now we start again. You move left to right. Any brackets? No. Any multiplication, division? No. Adding, subtracting? Yes. So, 77 minus 55, and that is 22. So, I hope by now you guys can see how all of this stuff works together and how you get to these answers. But you just need to practice and work with the maths. Now, I'm not done yet. I'm going to do another example because... Once you grasp this method of doing maths, you can basically do maths. All right. So, let's look at learning example 5e. So now we're going to do 12 divided by minus 3 multiplied by 5 plus 6 minus 5 minus 8. Wow. That's going to be fun. Alright, so first of all, you see a big thing like this, you relax. You can say, what would Carlo do? Carlo would relax. And just take a breather. And let's do it. Wait till we get to that one. That one's fun. Alright, so first of all, you work left to right. Always remember that. Then you do brackets first. So let's see, are there any brackets? Da 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 da. Tring! Yes, we've got a bracket right here at the end. So now we write all of that plus 6 minus. All right, 5 minus 8. So 5 minus 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 is minus 3. Okay. Now, left to right, here we go again, brackets, are there any more brackets? No, there are no brackets. The reason why we write the minus threes like that, it's just simply that they don't get confused with the division sign. All right, okay, so first of all, left to right. Brackets, are there any more brackets? No. Are there multiplication and divisions? Yes. So how do you do it? You work left to right. So 12 divided by minus 3. Remember what we said? The moment you have a positive divided by a negative number, it is a negative. 12 divided by 3 is 4. Okay, multiplied by 5 plus okay, 6. 
okay. Uh, plus six. Okay, remember what I said, the moment you have a negative and a negative, it becomes a plus, huh? Just remember that. Plus three. So it's minus four plus five, uh, minus four times five plus six plus three. Okay, minus and a minus, plus. All right, don't forget that. Those are all rules that you have to practice. So now once again, you do left to right, are there any brackets? No. Multiplication and division? Yes. We've got minus 4 times 5. So minus 4, and it's a minus and a positive, so it will be a negative. 4 times 5, 20, plus 6, plus 3. Alright, so now it's just minus 20, plus 6, plus 3. So now again, you work left to right. Are there brackets? No. A multiplication division? No. Adding and subtracting? Definitely. So minus 2 plus 6 is minus 14 plus 3. So once again, go through the rules. Your answer is minus 11. Okay. I know I'm sitting a long time on this, but once you have this thing, but you need to practice. Alright, it doesn't help I do all this funny stuff and you guys don't sit and practice. You have to do your homework. You need to work through the stuff. Otherwise, this is not going to help you at all. Okay. And just to give you a little idea, I am not a mathematical genius. Alright, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, when I did high school, I barely passed maths. I'm truly, truly honest. I barely... I barely passed it. I think I got an E or something on higher grade. But, um, and then obviously you can imagine when I did business literacy, I was a bit scared because I knew, oh my goodness, I cannot do maths. I can't do maths. I can't do, you know, because I know that I did very bad and I was so scared that I was going to fail the subject. Then what happened is I had a very good lecturer and the lecturer just explained this to me. Those four rules, he explained that to me. And when I grasp it, I realize, oh my goodness, I can do maths. And I got 100% for my, for my maths, which was a big surprise to me, because I was under the impression I couldn't do maths. But just because I had a lecturer that took the time and explained and got me to catch how this works, just helped me to be able to do maths. So, yeah. So, no, I wasn't a maths genius. I didn't do well at maths at school. But for some reason, and believe me, it was very funny when I became a, lit a lecturer in this field when they asked me to lecture on business literacy when I was a, le a lecturer after my studies. So I thought, yeah, I was going to, I need to get hold of my maths teacher and show her this. She would not believe me. All right. So now let's get back. Now, after what we've explained now, what I want you to do is this the sum that we started with, which I asked you to do to pause the video, with doing the rules now, try and do that one again. So pause this video quickly, just quickly see, using the rules that we've used now, see if you can do it. Mm, sorry, something in my eye. All right, so pause the video quickly, just quickly do it, applying the rules, see if you get the same answer or if you get a different answer. All right, pause. And we're back. Okay. So now let's do it. So, okay. So here we've got the sum. So once again, we follow the rules. That's as simple as that. Like I say, get a cup of coffee and follow the rules. Rules are not there to be broken, especially in maths. So we work left to right. Okay. So, are there brackets? Oh, yes. Okay. So let's concentrate. Okay, there's another bracket, so I'm just going to do that one first. So now let's concentrate on this one. So now we work on that one, and so once again, we start again. We work from left to right, left to right. Are there any brackets? Yes, we've got actually a bracket within a bracket. So in other words, now we just treat that separately. So we just say 42... Minus. Okay, so let's now we go into that bracket. Am I right? 
And once again, you go back to your rules. You work left to right, bracket. So we are busy with that bracket now. Am I right? Multiplication and division. Yes, we've got 6 times 3. That's 18 plus 7. Okay, and then we just write that plus 2 and close the bracket. So are we done yet? No. So we start again. 42, left to right. Now we start brackets. Da 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 da. Okay. So it's 42 minus. Okay, now 18 plus 7 is 25 plus 2 times 5. So remember you do your brackets first. So now we're not done with the bracket yet. Is there multiplication and division? No. Is there adding and subtracting? Yes. So you work left to right. So it's 42 minus 25 plus 2. 42 minus 25 plus 2 is 19. And then times 5. Okay, so once again, now you do left to right. Are there any brackets? No. Are there multiplication and division? Yes. 19 times 5 equals 95. Okay. It's as simple as that. The thing is just don't lose your head. Take your time. Practice it now before you do your exam. And just remember the rules. Left to right, brackets, multiplication, division, adding and subtracting. All right. I hope that was easy enough to understand. So just remember, start left to right. And there's a bracket. So if you have a bracket within a bracket, first do the bracket in the bracket because that is the rule. And you just follow it like that. Okay. But practice it and email me if you've got questions. Alright, but now it says here, what do you do if you've got a divide line? Okay, so let's do this. It's got an example, yes, 7 plus... 6 times 3 minus 13 divided by 6 plus 3 times 6 divided by 6. Oh my goodness, now that looks even worse. Am I right? That looks very bad, but it's simple. Once again, what would Carlo do? Carlo would relax. So all you do is you treat the top and the bottom separately. You first calculate the top, then you calculate the bottom area, put it together and you get to your final answer. So let's first work with that one. I'm just going to do that here. And once again, you just use your rules of math. As simple as that. Okay. You work left to right. Da -da 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 -da. Are there any brackets? No. Are there multiplication and division? Yes. So obviously, um, those two, okay. So it's 7 plus 6 times 3 is 18 minus 13. All right. So in other words, now you start again. Left to right, are there any brackets? No. Are there multiplication and division? Da -da 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 -da. No. Add is subtracting? Yes. So 7. Plus 18 is 25. 25 minus 13 um, is 12. So in other words, that one is 12. So, okay. so we've got 12 over 6 plus 3 times 6 divided by 6. And now we calculate that one quickly. So, first of all, rules of maths. Left to right. Da -da 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 -da. So let's do the 6. So brackets. No, there's no brackets within the bracket. Are there multiplication and division? Yes. So we do that one first. So that'll be 6 plus 3 times 6 is 18. Divided by 6. Okay. So now we do it again. Are there brackets? Yes. Are there multiplication and divisions? No. Adding, subtracting, yes. 6 plus 18 is 24. Am I right? Yeah. Divided by 6. And now you go again. Any brackets? No. Multiplication, division. 
24 divided by 6 is 4. So the answer is 4. So you've got 12 divided by 4 and that gives you 3. Alright, so when you get the divide line, just work separately with the two, put them back together and get to your final answer. Okay. Oh, who knew maths could be so much fun? Okay. So now let's see. I just want to see how far am I now. Okay. We're almost done. So, finding a missing figure. Yeah, sometimes it's necessary to find a missing figure in a huge sum of something. So, let's say they've got, I'm just going to do one of them, one or two of them. All right. So, they've got a chocolate bar and we need to calculate how many creamy lights that they, what sale, sell, sell on Monday. So all you do, so we know the total is 508. They sold 160 candy light. They sold 220 chocolates. Plus they don't know X, how many creamy lights they sold, but they know they sold 508 automatically. So when you get a... Uh, um, uh, some like this. It's simple. Is you need to calculate the x. Am I right? So you need to get the x alone on one side. So remember what I said um, when I said earlier that when anything moves over this sign, that it changes. Remember, positive is the opposite of negative. Negative is the opposite of positive. Positive. Division is the op opposite of multiplication, and multiplication is the opposite of division. So in other words, you need to get the x alone on one side, and then you need to do the calculation. So in other words, we've got, so I've got x here, all right, and I've got the answer is 508. Am I right? So first of all, we just bring over the 220, but remember, you, if it's added on this side, when you bring it over, you subtract it. Remember, it's the opposite. So the moment it moves on the other side of this equal sign, it forms into its uh, negative or the opposite. So it's a uh, adding. So here you minus two twenty and the same. It's a positive one sixty minus one sixty. Okay. So in other words, where's my calculator? So x is 508 minus 220 minus 16. Ah, 160, sorry. So the answer is 128. So they sold 128 creamy lights on Monday. Right. Okay. I'm going to do, I'll do one more example. So as long as you have got the answers I see there at Sunday, you'll see that, that one is a little bit, well not tricky because you haven't got any answers but you've got a total. The same way is because you're going to be working out all the answers of the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you can use exactly the same method, um, basically yeah, the, the same method. Wait, let me do that example with you, just to give you an idea. Okay. So if you do the calculations, if you do the calculations of Monday, Tuesday, etc., etc., and you need to calculate um, Sunday. So I've got the answers here already. So, oh, sorry. Okay. So in other words, so instead of working top to bottom, you're going to be working left to right now. Because you are calculating those answers there. So you will have all of them except the ones. And you've got the total. And you've got the total which you do require. Am I right? So let's see. So this will be 220. Plus 184. Yeah, I'm doing, um, I'm doing the chocolate. The one in the middle. Alright. 
So if you calculate that, that's 184 plus 152 plus 208 plus 192 plus 232. Okay, Sunday is the one we have to calculate, so plus x, and that gives you a total of 1400. Okay, so in other words, this works exactly the same. Now you just need to get the x on one side. So we've got x equals 1,400. And now you just bring all of those ones over. Once again, they're all positive, so they will get subtracted on the other side of the rainbow. You see, it looks like a rainbow, so somewhere over the rainbow it becomes a negative. All right. So 232, so 1422 minus 232, minus 192, minus 208, minus 152, minus 184, minus 220. So x, that one then equals 212. Alright, so that's now how you calculate a missing figure. So as long as you've got all the other ones, you can work them out. So you will do the same for the candy light and for the creamy light on the Sunday because you would already have calculated all those answers. And you will see they ask you to calculate the total as well of the candy light. You can do it exactly the same because remember you can, you can calculate the full bottom line of the creamy light and you will have the choco light and that way you can calculate the candy light in exactly the same way. All right. Great. Okay. So that's easy enough. I always say it's easy. I know and some of the people always say, how can you say it's easy? Yeah, because I've already done it. So for me, it is easy. So sorry. Sorry, but I know you guys are going to master this. And that's what I want to hear. So please, I would like to hear from you. To hear how you go getting along. How you're following the laws the laws of maths, uh, the rules of maths, I mean, um, is it working for you? So, and if you've got any other ideas of how you do it, calculate, please let me know. Then maybe I can work it into my next video as well, if you would like. Okay, so let's look at averages. Now we're looking at the averages. So let's say you've got five students. Now an average is just an estimate to show you how a group of people are performing. I mean, one person can get a, obviously, if a, one person performs more poorly than another person, that will bring down the average. But let's say you've got five tests for your, for your class, let's say for your ICB, you are working on, you're doing five tests. I know you're not really, but let's take an example. The first test, you were very smart. You got 100%, good job. Your second test, you got 80%. Your third test, you got 60%. Test number four, you went to, 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 to party a little bit. You only got 51%. And then test five, you got 79 So you want to find out what will be your average. So in other words, your average is calculated by adding all of that and then dividing it by the total of tests that you've written. So in other words, let's quickly do this calculation. So it's 100 plus 80 plus 60 plus 51 plus 79. That's 370. And you have to divide it then by the amount of tests that you've written. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 370 divided by 5. And that gives you, so your average then will be 74%. Okay, so the average of a set of numbers can be calculated by taking the total sum of the numbers, which I've done here, the total sum of the numbers and dividing the sum by the actual number of numbers in the set. Let's go one, two, three, four, five. All right, thus to determine the average of a set of numbers, we must add the numbers and then divide by the number of figures added. So how many figures did we add? We added five numbers to get to that total. So you take the total and you divide it by the number of items.
that you added to get to that total. All right. Okay. And these are questions that they do usually ask in your exam and in your test. So please make sure you familiarize yourself uh, with it. Now let's look at your powers and your roots. Okay. Now power notation is a quick way to represent the same number that is multiplied by itself several times. Now what does that mean? Uh, if you've got 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, so let's see, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2, remember you always work left to right, so that's 16. But another way you can write it is to say you've got 2 to the power of 4, meaning that 2 gets multiplied with itself 4 times, as you can see that. Okay, so that will be the power, so that would read 2 to the power of 4, meaning you take 2, you multiply it with itself 4 times, to get to 16. So you can write it like that. 2 to the power of 4 equals 16. Okay, and it also says that uh, power is also called an index or exponent and it indicates how many times the base number must be multiplied by itself. Alright, so we can calculate powers like if you've got a thing that says 7 to the power of 3, meaning 7 gets multiplied with itself 7 times. So 7 times 7 is 49, 49 times 7 is 343. 7 to the power of 3, 343. Okay, so now we're going to look at the root. Now remember the root is the opposite of power. Now please remember that when you get a, a sum or something, a calculation, if you've got the root on this side and you want to get rid of it, you will have to do that. Oh, if you've got the power on the one side and you need to get rid of it, you will have to do the opposite thereof on the next, um, well, on the other side. Okay, so first of all, let's say we've got 36. Um, the square root of 36 equals 6. Okay, so it means, <coughs> uh, sorry, I'm just reading it quickly. Yeah. It says here the root is the opposite of power. For example, if we have to find out the positive number that when raised to the power of 2 gives us 36, we would arrive at 6. Okay, so the answer is. Six. So basically meaning that six, so you know, this means, sorry, I'm just trying to figure, um, to think how to explain it now. This just means how much must a number be multiplied, how many times must a number be multiplied by itself, or which number must be multiplied twice by itself to get to that number. So remember, 6 times 6 equals 36. So 6 to the power of 2 is 36. Okay, so in other words, when you do the square root, which is the opposite of that, you're basically just saying that 6 has to be multiplied by itself one um, twice. So 6 times 6 to give you, uh, to give you 36. Okay, so I'm sorry, though, this is actually very confusing. I never quite thought how to explain this, to be honest. Alright, so in other words, 2 to the power of 4 means you are multiplying 2 4 times to get to the answer. So, in this one as well, so if you have to calculate the square root of 16, okay, you won't be doing the square root of that one, okay, never mind what I just said, because this is just working on what number you need to multiply by itself once or six or twice to get to the answer. So you need to multiply six two times to get to 36. So the square root of 36 
The square root of 36 then is 6, meaning you have to multiply 6. Sorry, I'm actually talking myself in confusion now, but I do, do hope you understand it. Luckily, I know they won't um, go in too much detail with regards to that. So, but just as you know, when you have to do your sum, so practice 5k a lot. Luckily, you can use your calculator to work it out, so you don't really have to worry much. Do your self-assessment activity 10. And now we are getting to the last part of this lesson, which is my personal favorite, binary and decimal systems. And for this, I get to wipe the whole board. Okay, now this was, I think, actually just a little bit of funness that they put in the things. Now, binary systems are usually a language that's used by computers. And, um, no, it's actually a computer language. So luckily I can tell you, you don't have to be able to count in binary, you, won't have, you, don't, you don't need to add in binary, you don't have to subtract in binary. But what you need to be able to do is you must be able to convert decimal numbers to binary and then you have to be able to convert binary back into decimals. And that's what I'm going to explain to you now. The example they've given us here is number and 18. Now binary consists of ones and zeros, which is a computer language. So if you're a computer boffin, you will obviously know what I'm talking about. I'm not really a computer boffin, but I, knew, I know a little bit about that. Okay, so binary consists just of ones and zeros. So if you need to, con if you have a decimal number like 118, you need to be able to convert that into decimal. Okay. So, I'm just going to write here, operations. And then, remainder. Ooh. Okay. So, now, first of all, how do you do it? I'm going to need my calculator for this. So, how do you convert that number into a decimal number? So, first of all, you take that number... 1, 1, 8, and you divide it by 2. Okay, so 1, 1, 8 divided by 2 gives you 59. Okay, so now here is the thing that you need to know. If you have a whole number, now that means it's a number that doesn't have a decimal after it, you mark it here at the remainder with a 0. If it does have a decimal behind it, you mark it with a 1. Okay, so we've got 59. So first, it's exactly 59, so there's no decimal behind it. So that one you mark with a 0. So now we take again 59 divided by 2 equals... That's 29.5. Okay, so it's 29.5. So the moment it has a decimal, it's marked with a 1. Okay, a 1. But, now when you transfer this one to the next line, you do not add the decimal. So it's only 29. Okay, only 29. So you divide 29 by 2, and that gives you... 14.1 So once again you see there is a decimal So that'll be one but when you transfer that you transfer it With out you transfer it without the decimal so you only take the full the whole number which is 14 so 14 divided by 2 is 7 exactly, so there's no decimal. So that then is a 0. And then you bring the 7 over, divided by 2. That gives you 3.5.
So because there is a decimal behind it, it's a 1. Okay. So once again, you only take the whole number and you say 3 divided by 2, that's 1.5. Am I right? It's got a decimal. So it's a 1. So, and then 1 divided by 2 equals 0 0.5. And then the 0 0.5 obviously has a decimal, so that's a 1. So obviously you've got a 0 after that, so you don't worry about it, so that's where you stop. So then when you write down this number, now please note, I saw it with my students at Damlin in Centurion. You write it down from bottom to top, meaning you write it down 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Eight. So remember you move from the bottom upwards when you write it down. So the binary number for 118 is 11101118. One, 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 zero, one, one, oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. Zero. So it's 11101110. One, 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 zero, one, one, zero. So you write it from the bottom up, not from the top bottom. Remember it must always start with a one. If you started with a zero, you know you made a big mistake. It must start with a one. So one 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 zero one one zero. All right. So I'm just going to write this here. One. Oh. Sorry. Okay. So let's go. One 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 zero one one zero. Am I right? I better be right. Right, one 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 zero one one zero. Okay, cool bananas. So first of all, so you take it, you divide it by two. If it's got a whole number without a decimal, it's a zero. If it does have a decimal, it's one. And when you transfer this number, you only transfer the whole number, you leave the decimal behind. The decimal has been transferred into that one, so it doesn't exist anymore. Let's just that's not really the rule, but that's what I always say. Okay. So first of all, so now I've showed you how to calculate, how to change a decimal into a binary. And now I'm going to show you how to change that number back into a decimal. Alright, so let's have number now. A little trick. So it's 1, 1, 1. Zero, one, one, zero. All right. So now a little trick that um, I've learned that makes it a lot easier, a lot easier, is on the top of these numbers, starting at the right hand side, just mark it. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. You can just use it do that with a pencil. So what you do then is, so if you, if you remember correctly, you will remember that we divide it by 2 to change a decimal into a binary, alright? So now we divide it by 2. So now we're going to multiply by 2, but to the power of whatever number. So let me explain how we're going to do this. So first of all, you have I'm just going to start here because this is going to be quite long. So that's going to be 1 times 2 to the power of 6. Plus, that's a 1 times 2 to the power of 5. So you take all those little ones and zeros and you just multiply it by 2 to the power of whatever number you have written on top of that. So it's plus 1 times 2 to the power of 4 plus, okay that's a 0 times 2 to the power of 3 plus, okay that's a 1 times 2 to the power of 2 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 1, plus, that's a 0, times 2 to the power of 0. Okay, so that's, 
just what you do, you take the ones, like I say, you just mark that just a little bit over there, just 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then you just take 1 times 2 to the power of 6, and a bracket, and, okay, plus 1 times 2 to the power of 5, 0 to the little bit up. Alright, all of that, so you just add that up and then you do your calculator. Now, for this subject, I would advise you get a calculator like this. Alright, let me go closer. Hope you can see it. Fx A2ES plus, because this thing works very nicely. You can actually, it adds, it works very well to calculate these things. I mean, I've, I've been using it ever since I used it through my bookkeeping to trial balance studies. Oh, not my bookkeeping, but um, business literacy. And I believe you, this, believe me, this calculator is an absolute lifesaver. So if you can get one of those, then please do it. So now we're just going to go calculate. So you just say 1 times 2 to the power of 6. So if you can see carefully there, you see you can just put that in there, 1 times 2 to the power of 6, and it calculates it for you. And that's 64. Plus, okay, I'm not going to calculate all of them, because I've already got all the answers here. So if you calculate that, that one will be 32 plus 16 plus, okay, 0 times anything is 0 plus 1 times 2. 4 plus 2 plus 0. Alright, so if you add that up, you get 118. Okay. I hope that was easy enough. So, that's just how you do the calculator. calculation. So, that was 118. We did it into a binary. And then we took the binary and we changed it back into a decimal. Alright, so guys, that's it for today. I think we've done the whole learning module 5. Next time we will be working with fractions and more on decimal numbers. And yeah, that'll be fun. So keep practicing and don't forget to follow your rules of maths. Thank you guys and I will see you next time. Cheers!